Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Today I have my good friend Zavaya on back with us to be our model. And on her, I am creating a look that I had created a few weeks back on myself for one of my intro shots. I'll show you right now. I love, love how this turned out. I'm gonna keep her skin a little bit more on the matte side, but I'm still gonna incorporate those rhinestones in the eye makeup and keep, uh, keep the lip nude. It turns out really great. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation in the shade 4N and applying this on with a makeup sponge. Well, technically, um, <laughs> I began with the skincare, but of course I managed to mess that up and forgot to press the record button, which you would think almost two years into this whole YouTube thing, I'd get the hang of it by now, but <laughs> nope. That's all right though. Everything else I got on camera today, I promise. But anyways, I mixed together the plexiglass illuminator along with the triple serum from Lancome to create a beautiful luminous base. I'll include both of those products down below along with everything else I used today. And of course, as we all know, this foundation here from Charlotte Tilbury is beautiful as well. I think it's great for those with oily skin as it's designed to stay all day and give a natural matte finish. And I'm really loving this shade here for Zavaya. It matches the center of her face perfectly, but as with most of us, the skin surrounding the perimeter of her face is a little tanner. So I'm gonna take the Luminous Silk Foundation from Armani Beauty in the shade 7.75, apply just a bit of it onto the back of my hand, and use a smaller brush to lightly blend it into the skin, specifically around the forehead, cheekbones, and jaw. Line. You can call this contouring, you can call this bronzing, you can call it whatever you want. Basically though, I'm just adding dimension back into the skin. Naturally, most of us don't have just one shade for our skin tone, but as you saw a second ago, when I was applying the first foundation, although it matched the center of her face perfectly, it was too light when I brought it up onto the forehead. But had I used this Armani foundation shade here around the whole face, it would have been too dark for her. So you kind of have to play around with it and find what works for you. But all in all, I think this is a great start to the complexion once we have this blended together. Next up, I'm using the Jouer Essentials High Coverage Concealer in the shade Lace and applying this on to brighten and conceal the under eye. In fact, what I did here was I applied this concealer to the back of my hand and mixed in the tiniest bit of that Charlotte Tilbury foundation to get a um, to get a little closer to her shade. I forget if this concealer was too bright or if it was too dark for her, but either way, this is a great little trick to use and one that I use all the time, especially for the makeup artist out there watching. I I don't know about you, but I've never been one to pack up 20 or 30 different concealer shades when I go to a client. I literally pack maybe seven or eight and then rely on the foundation to bring it a little closer to the client's shade if need be. And here I'm just applying a bit of this onto the eyelids to conceal this area as well, but this time with an eyeshadow brush. When I'm working on somebody with lash extensions, I just find this to be the best way to apply concealer onto the lids without getting the concealer in the lashes, which would happen if I were using the sponge to apply this on. So now that we have the liquid products applied, I'm heading over to the one size translucent setting powder to set everything into place with a powder puff, starting with the under eye area as this area is usually first to crease. And then I'll move on to lightly setting the rest of the skin with the same powder. This is gonna prevent those liquid products from moving around while also mattifying the skin. Even if I were going for you know, a glowy, luminous finish today, I'd still follow this same step to set everything into place and then add on a highlighter and a finishing spray to add some shine back in but I wanted to switch it up today and go for a you know a matte finish I've done so many different looks on Zavaya over the last few years and I wanted to try something a little softer today usually when I've done her makeup in the past it's something that requires a bit more because you know things just read differently on stage or on camera or you know, whatever it is that she's working on at that time. By the way, which reminds me, so if I just released a new song called God Sent You, I'll link it down below. It's honestly one of my favorite songs she's come out with. It's absolute perfection. Check it out. I, I really don't know a more talented person than her. So 
Alrighty, now that we have the makeup set, I'm using the One Size Turn Up The Base Powder Foundation in the shade Medium Dark 1NG to reinforce those tanner tones in her face. More so in the same areas we had applied the darker foundation earlier. This is gonna complement that shade, but without making her face a completely different skin tone than the rest of her body, <laughs> you know what I mean? And of course, it helps tremendously that the formula of this powder foundation is fantastic. It blurs, it adds coverage, and wears beautifully throughout the day. If you find yourself wanting to go for a more full coverage finish, you can use this powder foundation in the shade that matches your skin tone and press it into the skin with the powder puff. Not only will that add more coverage, but it'll also really mattify the skin and keep it that way all day long. After this, I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in the shade Fair and using this to bake underneath the eyes. Focusing this in that lower inner corner and sides of the nose and then diffusing it up and out towards the temples, following that lower lash line. Someone asked me in the comments the other day what the difference is between a setting powder and a baking powder. And, um, well... <laughs> I don't really know. I mean, to me, it, it's not so much the product itself that I'm labeling, but more so the technique I'm using. You can bake with translucent powder as well. In fact, that's what I'm going to do here in a second for the jawline. But the difference between the powder I'm using underneath the eyes versus what I'm using on the jawline is that there's color pigment in one and the other is translucent. Because I like a brighter under eye, I'm using a powder that has a color pigment in it that is a little lighter than her natural skin tone, which will leave behind a hint of brightness once we wipe it off later. And because I don't want her jawline to be as bright as her under eye, I'm using the one size powder, which is completely, you know, translucent. Does that make any sense? <laughs> I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I feel like I'm making it sound more complicated than it is. I'm going to give this some thought and figure out how to, you know, word this better, and I'll get back to you on it. But moving on, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Pomade in the shade of Soft Brown, and little by little start creating the brow shape I want to create. Now, this is something new for me. I usually go for a more like natural brow, I suppose. I mean, you know me, I don't usually go too intense with the brows, but I'm stepping out of my comfort zone today. Because I'm going for more simple eye makeup, I really want the brow to be edgy and structured and you know precise, which I guess really isn't all that soft, is it? <laughs> Did I say something earlier about a soft look? Who knows what I said, but the point is, I'm gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna speed this up a little, but still keep all the footage in so you can see how I built this up. Okay, here you're seeing me take some of that concealer we used earlier and using this to clean up the brow bone a bit to get a really clean line. And then I'll head over to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Duo Powder in the shade Ash Brown to fine tune the details. I'm heavier handed with this towards the end of the brow because that's where I want the most you know, pigment. And then little by little, blending this pigment forward to the front of the brow for that gradual ombre effect. I feel like if you're gonna do a bold brow, this is the way to do it, keeping it like lighter in the front and then darker towards the tail of the brow, don't you think? I mean, could you imagine if the whole brow was this dark? I, I, I think it would be a little much, but <laughs> what do I know? You do whatever makes you feel the most confident. The tricky part here though is getting the other brow to look the same, so I'm going to do that off camera to save some time and then start on the eye makeup with this shade called Taupe of the Game from the One Size Visionary Eyeshadow Palette to brush along the upper lid with a fluffy eyeshadow brush. And I'll also use this same shade with a smaller detail brush to lightly smoke out the lower lash line in just a minute. We're keeping the eyeshadow work easy and simple today, but you're seeing me here use a technique I've been using more often lately. I'm placing a piece of paper right at that lower lash line up towards her temples, which will give us a really clean line once we remove it. You'll see here in just a second, um, isn't that nice? And this is a great hack if you're somebody who struggles with eyeliner. If you do this first with a light eyeshadow and you like how the placement looks, you just trace right over that line with your eyeliner. 
The next shade I'm using is this one called Brownie from the same eyeshadow palette, and I'm just using this on the outer third of the upper lid for a bit more depth. What I will say about this eye makeup, guys, is that this is really easy. It doesn't take a lot of time, and it looks good on everyone, regardless of your eye shape. And then after blending this, I'm gonna use these rhinestones here that I got from Amazon to glam up the eye look. I apply these on first by taking some lash glue, as you can see here, and applying it to the areas where I want to add on the rhinestone. I find this to be the easiest way rather than adding the glue on the back of the stone and then popping them on. And to make it even easier, there are these rhinestone applicator pens that you can use to apply them. I used to have one, but I lost it. So I'm just using tweezers here, which is really quite easy. Once you get the hang of it, it, it only takes a couple of seconds to add them on. And they really make the biggest difference to the overall look, don't you think? It, it, it's simple, but still glam. And you can make it your own by placing these wherever you'd like. I just really liked the placement where I had done it on myself. So that's what I'm gonna recreate here. Now, once I have these on, I'm gonna head back to the complexion and wipe off the powder that we've let bake here. And as you can see, it wipes right off. To blush up the cheeks, I'm using this MAC blush in the shade Pink Swoon and popping this right onto the apples of her cheeks. I've really been loving this blush color lately. MAC always does an incredible job with her formulas. It's a beautiful rosy pink shade that has the perfect amount of pigment in it. By the way, can we take a second to talk about the brows? I'm so in love with how they turned out today. Now, <laughs> I was a little nervous at first, not gonna lie, but hey, you can't say that you weren't nervous too. They were intense, yes, no doubt about it, but once we apply a little shadow, a little blush, and some lip color, it all kind of comes together, doesn't it? Anyways, once we're done here with the blush, I'm going to take this Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and run this through the lower lashes. Nothing too crazy or over the top, just a little something to balance out the eye makeup. After this, I'm using this Makeup Forever Pro Glow Highlighter to highlight down the center of her nose. There's something I love about having a little highlighter on the nose and Cupid's bow while keeping everything else matte. So that's what we're gonna do. And then with this Buxom Powerline Plumping Lip Liner in the shade High Def Honey, I'm gonna begin tracing the borders of her lips. As you know by now, this has been one of my go-to lip liners. It's the perfect neutral nude shade. It glides right on, it's pigmented, and I really like that on the the other side of this pencil there's a brush attached to it that you can use to blend out the edges i thought that was pretty clever and here i just had zavia finish this up because you know sometimes the client just does it better than i can and when it comes to the lip liner and nose contour she knows what she likes so i just hand over the brush and to be honest i do this quite often as makeup artists especially when we get familiar with a client we can't be afraid to say hey here's the lip pencil or here's the brow pencil, feel free to change it up to your liking. Sometimes a client may not wanna ask you because they don't wanna feel like you know they're offending you, but by simply asking them or kind of you know giving them your consent to revise your work, it breaks the ice and builds that trust between the artist and the client. So moving on, I'm taking this Huda Beauty matte lipstick in the shade Interview and placing this right in the center of her lips. This has more of a mauve rose tone to it, which I think pairs beautifully with that neutral toned liner we used. And finally, for the last product, I'm using the MAC Lip Glass Clear Gloss and placing this right on top for that high shine finish. I've been using this gloss for years now. It's my absolute favorite clear gloss to use. And I know nothing sounds special about a clear gloss, but trust me on this one. Once you've tried it, you'll be hooked. It's, it's so good. And it makes for the perfect last step. And how I created the stunning glam on the naturally beautiful Zavaya. There we have it kids, I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.